presenting Astra Gazette, the screen magazine of the Royal Air Force. On the green grass of Lasham Aerodrome, Hampshire, the 73 gliders and more than 400 men and women who fly and service them gather for the National Gliding Championships. A party of 40 is here from the Royal Air Force Gliding and Soaring Association with nine machines. Quite a gathering. In fact, it's the biggest gliding contest ever held anywhere in the world. The gliders arrive in big trailers, big but handy, for each ground crew must be ready to recover its glider wherever the pilot may have to land it, and that has been known to include some pretty inaccessible places. But these beautifully designed little craft are as light as they are sturdy, and they're easily assembled or dismantled. Among the Royal Air Force contingent is Sergeant Goff, an MT sergeant, who is rated as the best Royal Air Force glider pilot. He is a League One pilot, which means he holds a Gold Sea license for distance. He takes off in a Skylark 3 glider, presented by the Nuffield Trust, and puts up an excellent performance, reaching 5,500 feet and staying airborne for 4 hours 50 minutes. It's not surprising that gliding is a very popular sport in the Royal Air Force, and their association owns 75 gliders and has eight clubs totaling about 800 members. And it's growing fast. At a flat in Kensington, London, the residents are just starting a typical day. By residents, we mean the owner and his pet. And when the pet happens to be a six-month-old otter from Iraq, you can bet there's a story somewhere. Well, there is. Several, in fact. For the owner is well-known author Gavin Maxwell. Midgebill, that's his name, is a loyal pet really interested in his master's work. Too interested, in fact. Gavin makes every allowance for Midge Bill, who was caught when the author was in the Middle East getting material for a new book, and is named after an Arab sheikh with whom Maxwell and explorer Wilfred Thesiger stayed. Mind you, Midge Bill tries not to be a burden. He does everything for himself. It may well be that authors who keep cats or dogs can work faster, but at least life's more interesting with an otter. It might be significant, too, that the title of one of Maxwell's books is God Protect Me From My Friends. In between times, Midge Bill is a cuddlesome and affectionate pet. But fond though he is of the otter, Mr. Maxwell intends to send him to his cottage in the Isle of Skye, where he'll be able to roam more freely until then he remains Britain's only flat-dwelling otter. Come with us now on a visit to that hothouse for human beings, the Sauna Bath, a Scandinavian institution rapidly gaining popularity in this country since the opening of a sauna in fashionable Kensington. There's nothing like a bath, any kind of bath for that matter, when you want to relax. And dancers like lovely June Wilkinson from London's Windmill Theatre finds it one answer to the nervous strain of show business. First off, and most important to the weight-conscious woman of today, is the scales. For the sauna is a sure way of taking off surplus pounds, even if you do put them on again. Next stop, the shower. The principle of the sauna is the same as that of the Turkish bath, cleansing through perspiration, but the fundamental difference is that in the Turkish bath the air is damp, while in the Finnish bath it's dry, although moisture can be added. The circulation is toned up by using a burnt switch. In Finland, the effect is heightened by rolling in the snow afterwards in temperatures well below freezing point. 
The girl, by the way, doing things the easy way is Rosemary Phillips. The drier the air, the more heat the body can stand. And temperatures of 212 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature at which water boils, are quite normal. And although there isn't a special damp room, steam can be produced by throwing water onto the stones that lie on top of the heating stove. After a cold shower and massage, you feel a different person. Yet although in England this is still a comparative luxury, no Finnish landscape would be complete without its little wooden sauna on the edge of a lovely lake. And in parts of Finland, there's one for every four people. The idea was, however, brought over here by a Norwegian, Helga Eriksson from Oslo. In the last few years, the popularity of the sauna has spread from Scandinavia through Europe to America, where they're used by the military services, athletes, and even showgirls like this lovely quartet. Proof before your very eyes that what we've just been saying is not just a load of hot air. For the first time ever, the Royal Air Force Rowing Club holds its annual regatta at Marlow. And it's not likely to be the last, for this is one of the pleasantest sports on the Thames. Crews from all over Britain are taking part. Here's one of the senior eights getting ready for their big race, which this year is between Benson and Cardington. But while the eights are preparing, already at the start are the junior fours. Cranwell B. And Henlow. Evenly matched crews and a very closely fought race. Never more than a few feet in it either way, though if anything, it's the cadets who are setting the pace. Only a few yards to go now and Cranwell B are holding grimly on to their very narrow lead. Henlow are fighting back, but they haven't much time. Here comes the finishing post and it's Cranwell B by a canvas. Now for the senior skulls, always a popular and exciting event. This year, the finalists are Spracken of Medenham and Hayward of Cardington. Spracken soon takes the lead, but Hayward's not letting him get away easily. But Spracken builds up his lead to win by one and three quarter lengths. And now the senior eights, the most important event of the whole regatta, between Benson and Cardington. The Benson eight are not the Royal Air Force representative crew, but a scratch crew got together for this event. All the same, they're giving Cardington a good run for their money. Cardington are a length ahead in the final stretch, and in spite of Benson's last-minute effort, they hold it past the post. Mrs. C.E. Chilton presents the prizes, trophies to grace many a station mess, and medals for individual crew members to remind them of one of the Royal Air Force's rowing club's most successful regattas. <laughs> 